Mesopotamia, the land between the two rivers, has been the venue for an illustrious cavalcade of great empires and mighty kingdoms since the beginning of written history. One relatively diminutive but long-lived kingdom most of you have never heard of was kerosene, not to be confused with the petroleum byproduct, kerosene, which is coincidentally produced in the same region today. The kingdom of kerosene was located in southern Mesopotamia. Its capital, Karak Spasinu, situated at the confluence of the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, was one of the great metropolitan trade hubs of the ancient world. The city was strategically placed, where it controlled all the trade that flowed through the region's rivers, which was going to or from the Persian Gulf. Initially, a city called Alexandria was built on the same location by Alexander the Great. He envisioned a grand port city there to service trade between his newly commandeered capital of Babylon and India. Like Alexander's lifespan, this city bearing his name was also short-lived. Not long after his death, the city was largely destroyed by severe floods. During the later Hellenistic Seleucid Empire, the city was rebuilt as Antiochia during the reign of Antiochus IV. The city became primarily inhabited by various Iranian peoples, Greeks, and Arabs. This was in contrast to the rest of Mesopotamia, which was primarily inhabited by native Mesopotamian peoples. The newcomers and the Chaldeans of southern Mesopotamia formed a strong amalgamated society centered around making a profit. Strong trade links were established with India and the West via the Nabataean desert caravans that regularly frequented the city. In a short period of time, the city flourished, while the Seleucid Empire wilted just as quick. In 141 BC, Mithridates I of Parthia seized northern Mesopotamia. That same year, the Seleucid Eparch of Antiochia and the Satrapy of the Erythian Sea asserted his independence, establishing the independent kingdom of Kerosene, also known as Messene. The self-proclaimed king Hyspausenes had a Hellenized Persian name, which likely indicates his origin and that of his dynasty. In the same manner as earlier monarchs, he renamed the city after himself. Karak Spasinu was famously well fortified, with Karaks meaning something along the lines of palisade, fortress, or castle. The formidable embankments around the city also defended its inhabitants from the periodic and severe floods of the region. After initially paying tribute to the Parthians for more than a decade, Hyspausenes briefly occupied Babylon before being driven out by the Parthians. Sometime around 120 BC, kerosene fell under Parthian influence as many regions of the crumbling Seleucid Empire put up stiff resistance or tried to assert their own independence. Kerosene decided it wasn't the time to self-immolate. Instead, they successfully negotiated surrender on favorable terms, where a reasonable amount of tribute would be paid to the Parthians annually, in return for their own autonomy. As a nominal Parthian vassal, Kerosene thrived. It was able to establish its commercial and maritime authority throughout the Persian Gulf, particularly in what is now modern-day Bahrain. The extent and degree of their authority is a matter of scholarly speculation. Kerosene's centuries-long relationship with the Parthian Empire was typically quite good. They were not overly taxed, and they provided a reliable stream of revenue for the Arsacid state. However, when the Parthian Empire was weak, kerosene would rebel sporadically. They were independent for short periods of time, which usually ended with the merchant kingdom strategically surrendering on favorable terms when they were met with determined Parthian retaliation. In 115 AD, the Roman Empire successfully invaded Mesopotamia for the first time. Instead of coming to the Parthians' aid, they strategically surrendered to the Romans under favorable terms. After the Romans left, the Parthians were pretty pissed at their old buddy, so they discontinued the Hellenized Persian royal family of Kerosene that had ruled there for over 200 years. They were replaced by members of the Parthian Arsacid royal family. They believed having an Arsacid family member on the throne of Kerosene would make the kingdom more loyal and integrate its goals more closely with that of the empire. This clever plan was a disaster. The Arsacid family loved to fight with itself, and Kerosene became the perfect hotbed for insurrection and palace intrigue. Consequently, the kingdom became more viciously independent than ever before. During the last century of the Parthian Empire, they galloped along a downward spiral of self-destructive civil wars. Kerosene was often independent, or allied to the Parthian claimant to the throne. The unstable times were bad for trade. The gradual silting of the Tigris-Euphrates River confluence also caused Karak Spasinu to decline, as large warships and merchant vessels could no longer reach the city's dried-up port. 
the city of Horat to the south gradually superseded Karak Spasinu, and some scholars believe it became Kerosene's capital in its final years. In any case, Kerosene went up in flames, when in 222, the Sassanid Persian king of kings, Ardashir, invaded and put an end to the kingdom. Of the multiplicity of Hellenistic states that were established after the death of Alexander, Kerosene was the last one standing. Karak Spasinu was destroyed, and a new city built in its place. And what did Ardashir decide to name the city after? You guessed it, he named it after himself. Astarabad Ardashir. The former Netherlands of the ancient Middle East never recovered its former glory. But the city was a prosperous center for minting coins during Sasanian times. After the Arab conquest, the city remained a center for minting coins for a time. The city, known as Maysan, slowly declined and was eventually abandoned in the 9th century AD. By that time, the site, which had once been a grand capital city for a long-lived and prosperous kingdom, had already been long forgotten, but has survived as a minor footnote in history. What is your favorite obscure kingdom? This has been Epimetheus. Thank you so much for watching, and please leave a like.